Let's start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Wahawah Kakwadash. In Hebrew, that's giving praises to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakwadash, the Bahamas of the Elders and Apostles of GMS, along with the Holy Spirit, who taught us His truth, honor to the brethren that's laboring doing the work to push the gospel risking their life and freedom to do so, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, the one-third of our people who will be the true Israelites, who are the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians, who sincerely return it back to the Most High Yahweh through his only son, Yahweh Shai, during these final moments, so that he will have mercy on us in judgment. Shalom, be back with another lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and I'm not sure when I'm going to title this lesson. But before we bring up the lesson, I'm going to bring up a small dream and a small testimony that I have. Now, a few months ago, I had a dream. And in that dream, I was walking, eating some food. And it was finger food, you know, like snacks. I was eating pretzels, crackers, nuts and seeds, dry fruit. You know, I was just walking and eating. Not really looking at what I'm eating, not paying in no mind. Now, there came a point where I picked up a certain food item and I started chewing it. Then I spit it out because it was nasty. Then I realized I was eating a bug. Then in my dream, I started panicking, being hysterical, being dramatic, spitting everywhere, probably throwing up, rinsing out my mouth, upset. I was full of regret. Like, dang, man, I done, you know, partially ate a bug. All uh, because I wasn't paying attention to what I was actually picking up and eating. And then that was pretty much the rest of the dream. Me being full of regret, trying to wash my mouth out. Now it's a lesson um, to be learned from that dream. But before we get into the lesson, we're going to go into the small testimony. Now the next afternoon when I woke up from that dream, I went to my YouTube, to my feed, and this was the first lesson that I saw from the brother Bakara Moth. European Union begins adding bugs to the food. Now, instantly when I saw this, um, that put together what the Lord was trying to show me in the spirit. So in my dream, I was eating, not really examining or looking at when I'm picking up, not necessarily being mindful about it. So the lesson is, during these last days, we got to examine everything we touch. You know, everything we're about to eat, we need to closely examine it and inspect it. You know, see what it really is. Meaning, you got to look at the ingredients. Because what's going to happen during these last days, a lot of people are going to be eating bugs and insects and don't even know it. Why? Because... Food was made one way back in the 90s and the earlier 2000s. Well, ingredients change in the food. So something may have been made one way five years ago. But in these last days, it might be made another way. It may have all kind of bug products in it. And that was the lesson from the dream. That during these last days, we are to be careful about what we eat. We need to be mindful of it. We need to inspect it, examine it, and it by what? Looking at the ingredients. It don't mean looking at your plate of food as, as you're cooking it or while it's on your plate, meaning you examine and look at it by looking at the ingredients. You know, is it some ingredients you never heard of before? Something that you can't pronounce? Well, you can do a simple Google search to see what it actually is. So that was the lesson, uh, pretty much, that I learned from that dream. I had a dream that I wasn't really looking at my food, paying attention. I slipped and ate a bug. Then I see this. So a lot of people about to slip and be eating bugs. And that's because of this devil, this gobble neck, Charles Schwab. He said that it's better for the environment if the population starts eating bugs. That's why they was telling the farmers to kill their livestock back in 2020. That's why there's all these 
food processing plant facility explosions, killing millions of chickens, hundreds of thousands of cows. They're trying to bring about the famine and push that agenda to feed bugs to the people. Now, I'm going to bring out um, this article that the brother Bakara Moth had brought out. Let me see if I can find it real quick. And he went into this article in his lesson. We're going to go over it just briefly. So the title, the EU, the European Union, officially put bugs on the menu. Crickets and mealworm larvae have been approved for human consumption. Now let's continue. Last week, the European Union ruled that the maggot-like larvae of mealworms and a type of shiny black beetle and house crickets may be used in the production of several foods. So they're going to start putting mealworm, which look like white maggots, but longer, and beetles and crickets in the food. And they're going to convert these, these bugs to powder form because a lot of our foods is made out of powder. It may have grounded up whole wheat flour or white flour, baking soda, cornmeal. So a lot of our foods are made out of powders. Well, they're going to start making powder out of these maggot-like worms called mealworms, but also beetles and crickets, and they're going to put that in these foods, including pizza and pasta-based products, bread and crackers. And that's the spirit, because in my dream, that's one of the things I was eating. I was eating crackers before I mistakenly ate a bug. And breadsticks, meat preparations. So your ground beef, your hot dogs, your sausages, um, you know, it may be made from one animal, but during these days to come, it may be like ground beef. It may be, you know, 60% ground beef, but 40% grounded up mealworm, 40% grounded up uh, crickets, and locusts, stuff like that. Now, crickets, locusts, and grasshoppers are lawful to eat, but mealworm and beetles are not. Not to mention the other bugs that they're gonna try to start to put in the food supply. Let's continue. Soups, snacks, sauces, biscuits, chocolate, and even bear-like beverages. Hold on, but they said that they will use bugs in several food productions. You know, this is many items, not just several. Let's continue. This means that Europe citizens may soon find themselves eating bugs without even knowing it. So that's what happened in my dream. I started eating a bug, you know, before I realized it, not even knowing. So that's why we got to carefully expect, examine our food when we get it. You know, do a Google search on the ingredients if you never heard of them before, if you can't identify what they are, and most of your food products got a 1-800 call number on it. If you got any questions or concerns, and you could call those people, you know, to make a decision if you want to consume that product or not. But also, too, um... I got another video that we're going to get into, and I'm going to let this play all the way through real quick. So listen carefully and tune in. A team of scientists at Belgium's University of Ghent are trying to find a way to substitute dairy in cakes, cookies, and waffles. They say deriving grease from insects is more green than dairy production. <laughs> For the last few years, they've been pushing you to eat bugs. Remember the headline from the Washington Post? Eating bugs can help the environment. Or how about this one from the New York Times? Why aren't we eating more insects? Eating insects is repulsive and un-American. And of course, therefore, in the eyes of the left, 
It must be awesome. The more perverse and unnatural, the better. By soaking the insects in a little bit of water and then mushing them with a kitchen blender before centrifuges separate a butter-like substance, a grease is made which the team used to bake with. Cockroach milk. It's real and it's being called the new superfood. Compared to the most nutritious milk on earth, which is buffalo milk, this is three times as concentrated. Bull. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. That may enhance your immunity, may improve your cardiovascular function. Insects are a far more sustainable source of food than livestock. Livestock production accounts for nearly a fifth of all greenhouse gas emissions. That's more than transport. By contrast, insects produce relatively few greenhouse gases, and raising them requires much less land and water. Despite all this, most Westerners find insects hard to swallow. You try doing a serious story about cow farts and cow burps, but it is a real problem. The emissions from cows producing methane gas. It's hurting the environment, and they say it also is contributing to climate change. To give you some context, one study says that going vegan for a year will reduce your carbon footprint by half as much as avoiding a single flight to Europe. Still, today's report says that changing your diet can help fight global warming, though many ranchers think the cow climate, the cow climate change connection is overblown. Cow manure emits methane, which can also come from cow burps, and yes, cow flatulence. Animals that can eat grass have very unusual stomachs that have these uh, bacteria that are methanogenic in there, and so they leak uh, natural gas, both out the front and the back. Uh, and so people have said, well, let's change the hay or throw some things in there. According to the climate change criers, Cow burps are one of the biggest threats to our entire planet, and the solution is a mask to catch cow burps. I'm not making this up. You can look at the picture for yourself. Cow emissions are supposedly more detrimental to the environment than all the cars on the road put together. So, y'all hear these devils. You hear how ridiculous they sound. All right, so we're going to roll the clip again. I want y'all to see it all the way through real quick. And we're going to have some discussion and some scriptures while we bring it out. So now we're about to start the clip over. A team of scientists at Belgium's University of Ghent are trying to find a way to substitute dairy in cakes, cookies and waffles. They say deriving grease from insects is more green than dairy production. So yeah, that's the first thing. They said they want to find a way to make substitutes for dairy products and cakes and cookies and stuff like that. And when they put the ingredient ingredients list on these products, you're not gonna be able to identify them, which I'm gonna show something in a little bit that we need to um, be aware of, which I'm gonna send it to the computer right now. All right, so this is a screenshot of a comment that somebody had left in a brother's lesson. So when we see a cheddar domestica, that means grounded up crickets, or aphitoboius diapernus, that's grounded up mealworms. And this would be the scientific names for these animals. But that's why the scriptures say in Syrac 12 and 10, Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. So our enemy, his wickedness would be like iron. Iron is going to rust. And once the rust process starts, it's going to get worse and worse. But this is compared to our enemies, which we saw the so-called white man. And that's why the book of Deuteronomy 28 say that we should serve our enemies for the want of all things. In, uh, in hunger, and thirst, and in nakedness. So the basic necessities for life, food, um, water, and clothing, we would have to serve our enemies. And it also said for the want of all things. So no matter what we could want in the world, one way or another, um, it's gonna come through Esau. And the scriptures just said, never trust thy enemy. So we're not supposed to even trust nothing that we get from them. If you get a bottle of water from Esau, 
you better inspect it and examine it closely. You get any food from your enemies, Esau the so-called white man, you need to examine it closely. Meaning when you get your food from the grocery store, look at the, at the ingredients list. See if it's being recalled lately. Call the 1-800 number on the back. So anything we get from these devils, you got to examine it. You don't trust nothing that you get from a murderer, a thief, a liar, and a devil. Don't trust nothing you get from them. Always examine it. So we're going to get back to the club. For the last few years, they've been pushing you to eat bugs. Remember the headline from the Washington Post? Eating bugs can help the environment. Or how about this one from the New York Times? Why aren't we eating more insects? So yeah, in 2017, they said eating bugs can be good for the environment. In 2018, they asked the question, why aren't we eating more bugs? Well, that lines up with the scripture, Ecclesiastes 12 and 10. It said, never trust thy enemy, for like as I am rusteth, so is his wickedness. So Esau was showing his wickedness in 2017, in 2018, concerning the consumption of bugs and food by asking these questions, making these statements. And then what? 2023, they putting it in the food now. So Esau going to ask a question one year, and then years later, he going to act on that very same question. So that's why the scriptures say, like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. So Esau asking the question, why aren't we eating more insects? That's the iron starting to rust. That's Esau showing the beginning of his wickedness and then what it got worse over time now they talking about grounded up mealworm and crickets and your most common food items now they talking about mealworm grease and butter for cakes and cookies now they talking about cockroach milk and how it could be good for you see that's esau wickedness getting worse and worse so let's let this continue Eating insects is repulsive and un-American. And of course, therefore, in the eyes of the left, it must be awesome. The more perverse and unnatural, the better. By soaking the insects in a little bit of water and then mushing them with a kitchen blender before centrifuges separate a butter-like... Hey, that look like butter. That's mealworm butter. Grounded up mealworm, those white maggot-looking things that you just saw, and they do some stuff to it, got it looking like butter. Hey, and that's why they got that product. I, I, I can't believe it's not butter. So they're going to have a I can't believe it's not butter part two. It's going to be grounded up mealworm. A grease is made, which the team used to bake with. Cockroach milk. It's real, and it's being called the new superfood. Compared to the most nutritious milk on earth which is buffalo milk this is three times as concentrated oh yes oh yes oh yes that may enhance your immunity may improve your cardiovascular function but see they said cockroach milk let's go back they said cockroach milk though they said what three times more healthier than the healthiest milk on the planet and we know cockroaches are disgusting, filthy, nasty. They stink when it's a bunch of them in a building. We know they scavengers. They eat trash and all other kind of BS. And we know roaches carry a bunch of viruses, bacteria, sicknesses, diseases. Dogs don't even eat roaches, but they trying to give you some cockroach milk. Not to mention all the milk that Esau, the white man, been giving us, been making us sick. That's why it says, never trust thy enemy. So him giving us cow milk, you know, back when our parents was growing up and our grandparents, that was Esau showing his wickedness. And what does it say about the wickedness of our enemy? As iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. So Esau's wickedness, his rust, began to get greater and greater over time. So they gave us first dairy cow milk. Now they're trying to give us cockroach milk. That's the iron. That's the rust on the iron getting worse and worse. That's the wickedness 
of our enemy getting worse and worse. They knew they weren't gonna give us cow milk forever. They already had the co the, the cockroach milk, you know, uh, thought out. Not to mention, they said it may help your immune system. It may improve your cardiovascular system. Well, that lines up with 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8, which let me make this bigger real quick so we can see. You know, because Esau lies, everything he do, he lies. So let's read this. And then shall the wicked be revealed, the wicked has shown himself, giving us cow's milk, trying to give us, I can't believe it's not butter, mealworm butter, cockroach milk. He's being revealed by his actions along with his word, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. We see why the Lord going to destroy these devils, trying to make people eat cockroaches. Let's continue. Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. What's a lying wonder? Be like, I can improve your cardiovascular system. I can enhance your immune system by what? By what? By giving you cockroach milk. Cockroach milk ain't gonna help none of that. We saw the effects that dairy milk had on our people, blowing our people up, getting us fat, obese, overweight, diabetes. We see the effects that dairy milk had on our men. Now they got male boobs. They got all that estrogen in them. They feminine not masculine, low testosterone, cancer, Crohn's disease, autoimmune disease, irritable bowel syndrome. We saw what the dairy milk did. Now what you think this cockroach milk gonna do? It's gonna get us sicker than all the other stuff that Esau gave us before. Why? Because as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. So let's say if Esau had 50 more years, after the cockroach milk, he gonna come up with something worse. And he's going to say, it, can, it may can do this. It may can do that. That's a lying wonder. You know, Esau acting like he can perform a miracle by giving us cockroach milk. But actually, he's lying to you. That stuff is going to destroy your insides just like this dairy cow's milk destroyed our insides. And that's a key word. He says it may enhance your immune system. It may improve your cardiovascular system. And and that's how you know Esau talking. It's always a may, a maybe, or it could, or it might. You know, he got to play on your imagination. Esau know damn well and ain't going to do none of that. That's him being a devil. And that's why Ezekiel 4 and 13, and the Lord said, even thus shall the children of Israel eat their the foul bread among the Gentiles with the will drive them. Now, this don't mean just bread. Bread is a broad term for all foods. And that everywhere that we were scattered, that our food would be defiled, contaminated, tainted, you know, polluted. That's why you got GMO foods, all those pesticides, all those fertilizers, all those toxic chemicals and contaminants. That's why you got, now they trying to put transmissible mRNA in the food supply. So then you eat the food, you get a dose of that medicine from the food, that medicine from 2021. Well, now you got mealworm in the food. You got beetles in the food. You got cockroach milk. That's our food being defiled. It's polluted, not good for us. Hey, and that's why we got to get out of here. Uh, Micah 2 and 10, arise ye and depart, for this is not your arrest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you, even with the sore destruction. And it's being called the new superfood. Compared to the mo- is made, which the team used to bake with. Cockroach milk. It's real, and it's being called the new superfood. Compared to the most- nutritious milk on earth which is buffalo milk this is three times as concentrated bull oh yes oh yes oh yes that may enhance your immunity yeah he said it's a superfood that's a lying wonder took a superfood 
out of the most dirtiest thing on the planet, some cockroaches. But that's why the Lord said, this is not our rest. It is polluted. The food is defiled. The water, the soil, the air is defiled. Everything that you can learn here is defiled and wicked. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you even with a sort of destruction. Everything about this place is destroying us. What we put in our bodies, what we feed our mind, the things that we do with our time is killing us. So how much more this cockroach milk? Which you people should be up the hell set about that. So y'all was crying about a baby formula shortage. Well, they're going to bring the baby formula back. It's going to have ground mealworm in it. It's going to have cockroach milk in it. It's going to kill your babies. You're going to be sick. Just imagine putting a bunch of cockroaches in the blender with a little bit of sugar and a little bit of water and drinking it. Like, how you going to clean them? Not to mention all the BS that they eat going to not be in the milk. See, things don't change with Esau. But... That's why the Lord said we got to depart from this place. Because if we had 10, 100, 200 more years in this place, hey, all the food would be made out of bugs. All right, now nah, let's get back to the clip. Improve your cardiovascular function. Insects are a far more sustainable source of food than livestock. Livestock production accounts for nearly a fifth of all greenhouse gas emissions. That's more than transport. So they said livestock production. What's livestock? Cattle, cows, goats, sheep. They said livestock production accounts for one-fifth of all greenhouse gas emissions. What's gas emissions? Carbon dioxide, CO2, all the other harmful fumes that's released to the environment by your car exhaust pipes, your warehouses and factories, and all the other things that humans do that release chemicals into the into the air into the atmosphere so they said livestock production one-fifth of all greenhouse gases now you see how they setting up the stage to lie on the cows which they're going to do in a minute and then they said that livestock production produced more gas emissions than all the cars and airplanes combined that's why they said more than transportation. But let's continue. By contrast, insects produce relatively few greenhouse gases, and raising them requires much less land and water. So raising insects for food takes less land and less water. In other words, it's cheaper. So this devil found out it was cheaper to give everybody cockroach milk and ground mealworm. Okay, so what about what about the food table, the food pyramid back in the 90s? What about, so where do the fruits and vegetables come in play? You see how that changed? You had the food pyramid, and then you had your, your portions, you know, eat smaller portions, more fruits and vegetables. Now all that that went out the window, now they're bringing you cockroach milk. Oh, and again, they said it's, it's cheaper to breed bugs for food. But what about those 18,000 cows that Esau just blew up in that factory explosion? What about all the cows and cattle and farm animals that was put to death back in 2020 because the government paid those farmers to put their livestock to death? What about the millions of chicken that's been burnt up worldwide? Because Esau blowing up all the factories. What about the millions of birds that was wiped out from the bird flu that Esau the white man created? Despite all this, most Westerners find insects hard to swallow. You try doing a serious story about cow farts and cow burps, but it is a real problem. So cow farts and cow burps is a real problem. So Esau, Esau back on his BS. Now let's see where he go with this. Emissions from cows producing methane gas. It's hurting the environment, and they say it also is contributing to climate change. So this nigga is lying. He said methane gas emissions from cow burps and cow farts is harmful to the environment. 
and it's contributing to climate change. Like East East saw, see, all right, now we gotta go to to the book of John eight and forty four. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Who was that murderer from the beginning? Cain. Who was Cain reincarnated as? Esau, the so-called white man. And the bold not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. There is no truth in Esau. That's why you're going to have these words that people can't readily identify on your ingredients list. You know, just, just put what it is. Put crickets and mealworms in the ingredients. Put roaches. Put worms. Put terms that people can identify with. Yeah, there is no truth in Esau, the so-called white man. Telling you it may do this, it may do that. That's like me telling you, you should take 25 Benadryls. You may get some good sleep. It's going to be your last sleep. All right, let's continue. When he speak of a lie, he speak of, of his own. Hey, what, how do you know Esau's lying? If he's talking. Talking out the side of his neck. Let's continue. For he is a liar and the father of it. So Esau is the father of lies. And what does that mean? That all lies come from Esau. Now, regardless of what the other nations lie about, say about, they lies and the deceit and the misinformation of the other people, well, it all starts with Esau. All the lies in the earth right now come from him. It don't come from the Chinese. It don't come from the East Indian. It don't come from the Africans. It come from Esau, the so-called white man. And here he's lying on the cows, snitching on the cows. That's why when we go to Psalms 50 and 19, thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frame of deceit. Who is this talking about? Let's see. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thy own mother's son. So going back to the very beginning, which set the stage for everything. Who was the first brother to speak against his brother? Did not Esau speak against Jacob, saying he took my blessing, took my birthright, slandering Jacob's name, and Jacob didn't take nothing. He got it fair and square in the even exchange. So thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, thou slanderest thy own mother's son. Esau the white man is always slandering us. You know, everything is our fault. You know, the war on drugs, crime in the streets is our fault. The pandemic, you know, it's our fault. Uh, the rap culture, why everybody's so violent, it's our fault. Esau slandering us. But rap culture and the cartels and the drugs in America go through Esau. Esau can kill us, and it's still our fault. So not only does Esau slander his own brother, now Esau slandering the cows. Because let's go back and hear that. Burks, but it is a real problem. The emissions from cows producing methane gas. It's hurting the environment, and they say it also is contributing to climate change. So... They slandering the cows. The cows can't speak like we do. They don't do what we do, build up factories and warehouses and drive vehicles. Cows ain't doing nothing but what they've been doing since the beginning of the world when the Lord created them in Genesis. But now for some reason, they're hurting the, the, the environment. Well, what about the previous 6,000 years of history. You know, ain't no animal ever hurt the environment. So Esau lying on the cows. Hey, Esau lies on the earth too. Because that's why he say, oh yeah, there's more earthquakes and more hurricanes because the earth is getting hotter. You know, Esau, Esau lie on everything that he can lie on. He, he lie on people. He lie on animals. He lie on the earth. So Esau is really slander, slandering everything. Let's continue. 
important context. One study says that going vegan for a year will reduce your carbon footprint by half as much as avoiding a single flight to Europe. Still, today's report says that changing your diet can help fight global warming, though many ranchers think the cow climate, the cow climate change connection is overblown. Cow manure emits methane, which can also come from cow burps and, yes, cow flatulence. Animals that can eat grass have very unusual stomachs. You hear this nigga? This nigga, Bill Gates, said that animals that eat grass have unusual stomachs. All animals eat grass. So are you saying all animals have unusual stomachs? The only one who got an unusual stomach is Esau. Because what? He eat bloody rare meat. He eat people. He drinks blood. He eat and drink all kind of bodily fluids. Esau eat anything that moves and breathes. So Esau is the one with the unusual stomach. Talking about any animal that eats grass have unusual stomachs. But that's what? That's him giving his mouth to do evil and his tongue to frame the sea by lying on the cows. Like you like 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 they like they the earth's problem right now. Let's continue have these uh, bacteria that are methanogenic in there. And so they leak uh, natural gas, both out the front and the back. Uh, and so people have said, well, let's change the hay or throw some things in there. According to the climate change criers, cow burps are one of the biggest threats to our entire planet. So now cow burps is the biggest threat to the entire planet. Well, we know according to the scriptures that, that the biggest threat to the planet would be Esau. That's why Jeremiah 50, 30, 51 and 25 reads, Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyest all the earth. Who's destroying all the earth? Esau, the so-called white man. I will stretch out my hand upon you and roll thee down from the rocks. I will make thee a burnt mountain. So the Lord made these death threats to a nation of people, which this lines up with Ezekiel chapter 35, I believe, verses 3 through 4. You know, the Lord not going to stretch out his hand against the cows. You know, the cows ain't do nothing but what they've been doing. But what's changed in the past 500 years? Esau, his vehicles, his warehouses, and pretty much everything that he's been doing with technology, destroying the environment, cutting down the trees. And the solution is a mask to catch cow burps. I'm not making this up. You can look at the picture for yourself. So, to save the earth, Esau came up with the idea to make cow masks to catch cow burps. Well, this lines up with Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. This ain't happened yet. But when the wicked bear of rule, the people mourn. And who else did Esau make wear masks going back to 2020? Didn't he force us to, to wear masks? Now he forcing the cows to wear masks. You know, what animal going to be next? Esau got to put masks on everybody. And you wearing a mask, that's like a muzzle. So that's why it says, when the wicked bear of rule, the people mourn. Not only are the people mourning, the animals are mourning. Cows don't want to wear that. So the earth is mourning. So Esau, a grimy little devil. So let's continue. Cow emissions are supposedly more detrimental to the environment than all the cars on the road put together. Did y'all hear that? Let's go back and we're going to finish the lesson. Are supposedly more detrimental to the environment. I'm not making this up. You can look at the picture for yourself. Cow emissions are supposedly more detrimental to the environment than all the cars on the road put together. So cow emissions from cow burps and cow farts is more harmful to the environment than all the cars combined. No, that's BS. So when we hit Isaiah 49 and 21, we can show what's detrimental to the environment. You know, that's why the Lord said prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise to possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities, 
why did the Lord say this? Because if their population increased and they fill the face of the world with cities, there's going to be gas stations everywhere, warehouses and factories, millions and billions of vehicles. So what do they want to do? Do they want to kill all the cows thinking that's going to save the environment? Well, if you truly want to save the earth, you got to you got to exterminate these Edomites, these so-called white people. Cuz cows, they burp and fart, you know, once in a while. But over here in America and the rest of the world, you got vehicles running 24/7. Factories, warehouses, and nuclear plants running 24-7. So how do cow methane gas emissions beat that of the vehicles all over the earth? So that shows you Esau lying. So all of this talk on cow emissions and global warming just to say what? That people need to eat bugs to save the environment because it's more cost efficient. It emits less methane. It's better for the environment. So that's their rationale for trying to get the people to eat bugs. So yeah, be mindful of your food. Examine it closely. Look at it. Inspect it. Even in the packaging. Make sure there's no bug parts in it. At the ingredients. Make sure there's no bugs in it. Call the people. Do a Google word search. But be mindful of what you eat. But that's it for this lesson here. Until next time, Shalom.